Yes, you mean for the business meeting? Yeah, we, I got them right there. We can wait till. Good evening. Welcome to our midweek prayer meeting. Good to have you with us here. Take your Bibles or um, uh, hymnals. We'll turn to number 620. Onward, Christian soldiers. Stand with me if you're able. 620. Onward, Christian soldiers. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banner. Marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Verse number three Like a <laughs> army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have drawn. We are not. Divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christians, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus. Onward, then, ye people, join our happy throng. Then, with ours, your voices in the triumph song. Glory, Lord, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages, men and angels sing. Merlin, will you open the service in prayer? Amen. You may be seated. 624. Count your many blessings. 624. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings. Every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money can <clears throat> Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one 
by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. We'll stop with that one, number 580. 580, he leadeth me, O blessed thought, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Eight, or 580. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. What air I do, where God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, Sometimes we're eating the flowers blue by waters calm or troubled sea. Still, tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. All God's own hand, he leadeth me. His faithful followers. Verse number four, and when thy task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory's won, in death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, I his And 586, 586. <clears throat> the cross that he gave may be heavy, but it ne'er outweighs his grace. The storm that I feared may surround me, but it ne'er excludes his face. The cross is not greater than his grace. The storm cannot hide his blessed face. I am satisfied to know that with Jesus here below, I can conquer every foe. The thorns in my path are not sharper and compose his crown for me. The cup that I drink no more bitter than he drank in Gethsemane. The cross is not greater than his grace. The storm cannot hide his blessed face. I am satisfied to know that with Jesus here below I can conquer every three for the last. The light of his light shineth brighter as it falls on paths of woe. The toil of my work groweth lighter as I stoop to raise the load. The cross is not greater than his grace. The storm cannot hide his blessed face. I am satisfied to know that with Jesus here below, I can conquer every foe. Amen. Thank you, Miss Kristen, Miss Sandy. Well, we have a quarterly business meeting tonight.
And then on Saturday, we'll be traveling to Tinley Park for uh, quizzing. And then on April 29th, we're going to have a uh, security meeting here at the church, Saturday, April 29th. And that will begin at um, 10.30. Is that right? Pardon? 10 o'clock. My apologies. 10 o'clock. Um, remind me, uh, Brother Andy, I've got a paper I uh, wanted to share with you. It might be something you might be able to use. And so before you go home, I'll just see, uh, give it to you. And if you can use it, great. If you can't, um, that's fine too. Hebrews chapter 10 tonight. Hebrews chapter 10. Dealing with principles that we see in the Bible. <clears throat> Hebrews Chapter 10, picking up in verse number 21. And going down to verse 25. <coughs> Hebrews 10, verse 21. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Uh, maybe a, a, a message that um, is uh, preaching to the choir. If you're here on a Wednesday night, you already see the importance of the local church. But um, nonetheless, I think it's necessary as we go through some of these principles. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your instruction in your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would be in our midst and edify each one of us. Help us, Lord, to, uh, in love, uh, provoke uh, one another in love, and that we would edify and encourage one another. And we thank you, Lord, for um, the local church that we have here. And we thank you that we are your body. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that I um, that the Lord has blessed us here with is is unity. Um, we have a great deal of unity, and I'm not saying that we all have the same opinion or we all um, think that we have to agree on everything. But we realize that in minor issues, it's okay to be different and uh, and still love one another. In Ephesians chapter, in, in the book of Ephesians, um, the, uh, the Apostle Paul compares the church to three things. He compares the church to a building in uh, chapter 2. He compares the church to a body in chapter 4 and a, the church to a bride in chapter 5. Um, and a building is made up of different materials. It is made up of different rooms. It is each room has a different purpose, and uh, and, and yet it is useful and it is functional for what uh, because of what thing? Because it is unified. It is uh, it is together. The apostle Paul says in Ephesians two twenty one, in whom all the building fitly framed together. And it is unified. It groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Notice that this is a positive structure. Um, we are framed. We are builded together. We are growing into an holy temple. God never uh, intended the church to be constantly dividing and constantly uh, fighting and critical. He intended it to be edifying, to be building up and, uh, and, 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 and fellowshipping. And we need that. That is why we have the command to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It is because we need that building up. We need that strengthening. We need that 
uh, edifying and, and challenging one of another. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 16, he says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? The building was a positive structure. This is a positive uh, unity or union uh, that we have here in, a, in the body. It is for our health. It is for our strength. It is um, the every joint supplieth a different thing uh, for the body. We supply what others are lacking and others supply what we are lacking. And then, of course, in Ephesians 5, we have the bride in which we see the same picture again, a positive relationship, each wholly looking out for the other. This is what the church is meant to be. If I ever get to visit California, I, I, it's not on my uh, to-do list, it's not on my wish list. Uh, they're, they're very, uh, because of their um, liberalism, but if I ever do get to visit the forests of California, I want to I want to look to see those redwoods, yeah. uh, the sequoias and the redwoods. It, it's just amazing. Um, they are some of the biggest and the oldest living things on the earth. There are some redwoods in uh, California that are over two thousand years old. And they were they were there when Christ was born. <laughs> Um, that's just uh, uh, amazing. And the largest um, sequoia is 270 feet, 5 feet tall and 36 feet in diameter. That's almost as wide as this room. That is just incredible. I'd just be, I can just imagine just standing there in awe of this, uh, of this, of this tree that's standing there. The tallest redwood is 385, 80 feet high and another 100 feet above the biggest one, but it's not nearly as big. But the, the thing I'm getting at here is you would think that for a tree that's 380 feet high, those roots must go 120 to 200 feet down in the ground. But a redwood's roots rarely reach lower than 12 feet. 12 feet. And you say, how do they stand? How does a 300-foot tree stand? Because it intertwines and locks its root with all of the trees around it. And a stand of redwoods remains standing against the, 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 the storms and the winds because they all stand together and they all interlock their roots and wind their roots around each other and, and, and uh, support each other and edify each other. And that's what God wants us to do as a church. We, we are to, to support and, and help another in his weakness and in his discouragement and when he's down. And, and, and in turn, he does the same thing for us. And together we stand strong. We stand tall. And we are, are fitly joined together, edifying and supplying each other's needs. And that's what God intends for the church to do. That's why he says, don't forsake. This, this is, this is a, a, a really important thing for you to do. Take time out of your schedule, no matter how busy it is, to get together. You need this. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Church should be where I feel the most at home. Where, where, I, um, where, where I'm most comfortable to, to ask for help and to uh, express my feelings. And I think many end up forsaking the assembly because they get critiqued instead of helped and uh, looked down upon instead of lifted up. And uh, if we are truly a body, the head needs to help the foot. The left hand needs to Help the right hand, not stab the right hand. And, uh, and many times uh, that um, in times of temptation or discouragement or failure or, or just openness, we, we get um, taken down instead of lifted up and, and helped. 
And we ought, we ought to be the most comfortable with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we ought to be able to express our struggles and express our frustrations and, and find the most understanding right here. Now, I'm not saying there won't be a time for correction. There won't be a time for, for rebuke. But it still can be done in love. And, um, you know, the Apostle Paul said in, in the, uh, to the Thessalonian church, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. The fellowship of believers is essential to our physical health, that encouragement, that lifting up, and to our spiritual health and well-being. You know, during the, the COVID craze, the church was deemed non-essential, wasn't it? Um, it was an attack of the devil on the church. God says it's essential. He says, don't forsake it. Um, he, th there are many essential things that are being forsaken today uh, in this age. Morality is essential for the health and well-being of a family um, and a country, but it is being forsaken, and families are, are, are suffering. You know, I saw a, a, um, a headline yesterday, and it said, chaos rules in Chicago, um, the lack of two-parent homes is to blame. Um, but we're not allowed to say that. <laughs> Somebody stated it. Uh, somebody's uh, study somewhere stated it. But, but uh, what's, what does that come right down to? Um, lack of integrity, that's essential. Lack of morality, that's essential. Um, lack of humility. They're, the devil's attacking all of these things that God says are essential. Salvation is essential. And that is uh, definitely under attack. There are many essential things that the devil is convincing a blind world are non-essential. Uh, but here in our passage, the Lord says that the church is essential. We need each other. We need the fellowship. We need the edifying. We need that building up. And so let's just look at a few principles that we see concerning the church uh, and the fellowship of believers. First of all, nothing in my life should take priority over God. Nothing in my life should take priority over God. Mark 12, 30, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy uh, mind, soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. I was talking to uh, Brother Mike Monday night, and he shared a saying with me, and I think I'll put it on the sign, uh, church sign, if, uh, if it'll fit. And that is, uh, God will never give you a schedule that doesn't include time for him. If your schedule doesn't include time for God, then it's not of God. <laughs> if I were to ask my wife to sit down and work out a schedule for the next week, she's not going to work out a schedule where, where, where we're never together. No, it's going to be a schedule where there's time for us to be together. There's time for fellowship. There's time uh, every day where, where uh, she has priority, where I have priority in, in, over her schedule, or, or she has priority over my schedule, and uh, uh, she has priority over my activities or whatever it may be, because that is essential. And so it is with God. When we push God and God's people, fellowship uh, with God's people, to the back burner, uh, then we are disobeying the command of God. There's no substitute for spending time with God and with God's people. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 23, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So what they were focusing on, they were focusing on things that could be checked off. Uh, things that they could accomplish when the, when the Lord said, you ought to do those things. 
But they're not important as these relationships. Uh, the, the things that, that pertain to a relationship with God and a relationship with people. Judgment, mercy, uh, and faith. Those things that actually take work and actually take sacrifice in, in, in our lives. They're not just something that you can do and check off for the day. And, um, and so we need to make God and God's people a priority. We may need to make God's house a priority. This is where he meets us in a special way. In verses 21 and 22 here in Hebrews um, chapter 10. Having an high priest over the what? The house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. We live in a day when uh, the littlest thing becomes a great reason to skip church. Uh, we'll go to work if there's eight inches of snow on the ground, but if there's a half inch, we'll skip church. Um, we, we'll just seem to look for opportunities. Uh, sports, uh, got to take the kids to sports or, or got to go camping all summer long, gone for four months. Um, got to go to a football game, what, something or other. These things just seem to take priority. And I'm not saying don't take time for a vacation or, 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 or some other thing. But typically, if God is your priority, you miss not being in the house of God. And uh, that's where your heart is. Um, we need to make God a priority. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 33, Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Not only God's house, God's truth should have priority in our lives. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Not only God's house and God's truth, but God's people should have priority. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Notice he didn't say to provoke. <laughs> he says to provoke unto love. Uh, big difference there. If our best friends that we hang out with all the time are unsaved friends that do questionable things, then there's probably a question on what my priority is. Secondly, uh, fellowship with believers strengthens and encourages. We are to consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. We are to exhort one another, we're told here. The devil will do everything he can to tear you down and to discourage and to cause you to quit. But worshiping and studying together, uh, fellowshipping and encouraging one another, we can be like the, the redwoods that we talked about and stabilize each other when we might by ourselves be weak. We can strengthen each other when we might by ourselves fail. Number three, fellowship with believers helps us to grow and mature. In Ephesians chapter four, the apostle Paul is speaking about spiritual gifts that God gives to people and, and uh, those people to churches. And he says in verse number 12 and 13, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We need to, we need to get together in order to strengthen and edify and, and share our gifts, share our strengths. And, uh, you know, many times we come together to help somebody else and we go Go away ourselves, encouraged and strengthened and lifted up and held. And uh, number four, fellowship with believers lifts up the fallen. You know, sometimes we don't even realize that someone's not doing well or someone's going through a rough time until we don't see them in church. You know, um, I, I've, uh, I've had... Through the years, people say, well, why didn't you come visit me? I was in the hospital. I was like, well, I didn't know you were in the hospital. Well, I wasn't in church. Well, you haven't been for three months. 
Uh, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Uh, but if, they're, if, if somebody's heart is here and they're here whenever they can be and they're not here, you say, I, I, I need to call that person. Um, obviously, something's wrong. And uh, Miss um, Carol uh, mentioned before the church service, uh, did you know that Robinsons were, were sick? Yeah, somebody cared enough to, to, to call because they're usually here, right? And so, um, but uh, the fellowship lifts up the fallen. When somebody else is not doing well or not feeling well, then uh, we come together and we, we lift up. Um, when someone is missing from their usual, usual spot, um, had somebody ask on Sunday, uh, where's Brother Mike? Uh, he's, he's always here, <laughs> you know? And so um, we, that, that, that is uh, one of the reasons that we, we meet together, we encourage each other, we help each other out, and when um, someone is missing, it's, it's a real loss. Hebrews 12 tells us, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And that can apply to you yourself, but it can also apply to a brother or sister. Help, help them. There's, there are times when you are so deep in discouragement and despair that, that you need somebody else to pray for you. You need somebody else to to come alongside you're 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 too discouraged to pray pray or you're too discouraged and um and i know we shouldn't be but that's the reality of it we are sometimes we need somebody to come along and lift us up lift us up with a prayer lift us up with a song lift us up with a word of encouragement lift us up with kindness lift us up with a with a smile lift us up with just being there and uh, we need to be accountable to each other and for each other. Galatians 6 and verse 1 and 2. Brethren, if a man be take, overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Not in the spirit of harshness. In the spirit of meekness. Why? Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Notice he's talking to the spiritual here. Ye that are spiritual, you can be tempted too. You, you can fall too. Um, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, even those that we consider to be spiritual um, have days of discouragement, have days when they're down. The Apostle Paul told Timothy, do thy diligence to come to me shortly. Why? Because so many people have forsaken him. Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Thessalonica uh, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable for me, to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. Now some of these had forsaken, and most of them had been sent to different ministries. They had work of their own to do. But the Apostle Paul was discouraged. He was in prison and and he didn't have that fellowship that he, he needed. And uh, so we need to uh, remember this um, command of the Lord to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. If our priority is with God, it will also be with God's people. Where our priorities lie will be shown by what we do and not by what we say. You know, it's very easy to to say what you love and to, to, to say what you, you do, but um, what you do, um, your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Uh, as uh, one person said, um, the, the Pharisees like to talk about what they did. I fast twice in the week and I, I give of these tithes and I do this and I do that. And the Lord wasn't pleased with them at all. Um, God should have priority. And one of the ways that we show this is obeying the basic uh, commands that he gives us, which in one of these is, is this. One way to tell whether you're truly living in obedience to reveal truth or not is asking yourself, would I be happy if... Uh, would I be happy to see my children carrying on the same devotion that I have? 
You know, oftentimes we make excuses for ourselves and we want somebody else to bear the standard um, that we say we bear. But uh, a, a real uh, checklist to see if, you're, if your priority is truly with God, would you be happy for your children to do exactly what you're doing? And, uh, and, and, um, or, or are you just excusing yourself? Does my life and my fellowship reflect the fact that God is number one in my life? Or is there something else that has turned me away? May this be true in our lives. You know, um, many, I think that's probably one of the reasons that uh, many young people are turning away from church. They just have never seen the, the conviction in their parents' lives. And so it never was important to them. And so they're just carrying on what they've been taught, what they've been taught. And, uh, and may the Lord help us that that will not be true in our lives, that uh, we will make a difference in those around us and we will not uh, forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is happening all around us. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you um, for uh, this principle that you've put in your word. Thank you for the fellowship of believers that you have given uh, your body here on earth that, uh, that we might be lifted up and encouraged and exhorted. And uh, Lord, that we would be unified. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified in this, your body the uh, LaGrange Baptist Church, thy local body right here in LaGrange. I pray that you would help us to uh, be obedient to your command and show our love to you and uh, show that you're a priority in our lives as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.